I was asked to become a, a mentor. Got me, kid. <laughs> I've never seen anything like yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's like a type of shark. All I could think of, and I said it publicly too, I says, boy, I wish they had this when I was a kid. Basically, these kids got nothing on me. We weren't any angels, trust me. I grew up in Boston in the late 60s, early 70s. Everything was happening all at the same time. Vietnam was raging. You know, the mobs were fighting and there was blood in the streets. It was crazy, you know, so you had to learn how to survive real quick. The judge was sick of seeing me. It was gonna be jail. However, if I happened to be in the United States military at the time of sentencing, all charges would be dropped. He said that you ought to think about doing this type of work as a geologist. He said, you're, you're a natural at it. Nobody had ever told me I was a natural at anything. And the last thing I was going to do was screw up my second chance. So I think a lot of that has to do with me wanting to help with the RJP project and help these kids get a second chance. I have a dad and a mom. I have chickens, three dogs, two turtles. One's a painted turtle and the other one's a red-eared sliding turtle. They're kind of old. Then I have like two long-haired guinea pigs. One's black and that one's mine and his name's Tony. My husband and I have three children. Donovan is the middle child. What are you doing? It's Eleni's birthday present from her brother. <laughs> he was 12 when we moved. Well, I wanted them to be in a peaceful environment, so that's the main reason we moved out of the city. The school system was just horrible. There were drug dealers everywhere and fights and stuff outside of our house. We knew we wanted to move the kids somewhere safer, better schools. Let's move up to Maine. Just for them to have a better life. Something that, you know, everybody wants for their kids. They were very excited to leave, but I think when they got here, it was a big culture shock, especially for Donovan. My name is Mark Brunel and I'm a detective with the Bath Police Department. Our department became involved with Donovan because of a situation where he made a report to our department um, that ended up not being exactly what it seemed to be. I told them that someone tried to abduct me. The struggle happened right here on this block and police say a man tried to pull a little boy, a 12 year old boy, into a minivan. Police say the would-be kidnapper is a man about 40 years old with a bald head and a long beard. And anyone with information about this case is urged to call Bath Police. Live in Bath, Sinead Williams, WMTW News 8. Well, that story, it, it was um, a little nerve-wracking because we took it for his word. I told the police officers afterwards that it didn't happen. Long story short, it was... He missed his family in Pennsylvania. He thought that that would have been big enough and scary enough that we would have said, this place isn't any better than what we came from, so we might as well go back. So in our minds, yeah, that makes no sense at all. But in a scared 12-year-old's mind, it made perfect sense. Now you got the sketch artist because you're making up the story of saying what he looked like. You got the police department's time. I said, and, you, and your parents' trust is just almost gone. Mark Brunell came to the house, questioned Donovan, and Donovan owned up. I said, so you got to rethink things. You got to start making better decisions. It's universal that human beings um, 
heap harm on one another and need to find ways to respond. I've been face to face with some people that uh, I can think of no better use of taxpayer dollars than to keep them behind bars. I've also uh, looked into the eyes of people that I knew were going to jail that, boy, I wish there was a different way that we could deal with this, you know, because it, it just seems like a waste. Sometimes it doesn't seem like the best solution is always um, the court system. And so restorative justice has kind of been something that has been around for a few years and we have an opportunity to work with folks that are in our area now and we see the benefits of that. I wasn't sure about the whole process because it wasn't something I was used to, you know. They gave us a whole rundown on what they, their services were and what they planned on doing. So I was like, okay, this, this could be helpful. It doesn't seem to help us as human beings to, um, to conduct our lives in shame. And it certainly doesn't help us to conduct our lives in shame and self-recrimination and have no way to address that shame. There's no limit to who might participate in a circle. It's, it's really, have they been affected or do they have a stake in the outcome? The person who caused the harm is asked to speak first. And then the person who has been perhaps the most uh, egregiously or directly harmed might go next um, to really share whatever that experience has been like for them. We talked about what happened and why I did it and what could I do to make it better. You could see it in Donovan's face. He'd realize that he had caused you know, some pain to a lot of people. And that's a very powerful, very effective thing. Did you feel like there was anything about the process that actually felt good? Telling them that I was sorry about it. It's a very practical process on another level. And it results in a repair agreement. They were able to come up with solutions um, to the underlying problems rather than just focusing on treating um, him as a, a bad kid and just someone that made a mistake and how we could go forward from there. It's hashed out things that Donovan could do, how it would benefit the community, him. Once that circle is completed and the contracts are agreed upon, all parties sign it, and then it begins to be implemented and I'm the person that helps them implement it and document it. Part of the mentor and training you learn it's not at all wishy-washy. I mean, part of it is to make sure they understand they did something wrong. It was definitely a positive from the start. We like, will do community service. He realized that accountability for his actions, you know, is a big thing now. If you can find out what makes the person tick and feed it with good fuel, it starts a positive feedback loop. They feel good about themselves, therefore they want to do other good things and help other people. Bedrock. Bedrock. That's awesome. By the end of the school year last year, he was on the honor roll received an award for the most improved student. I went from D, C, and F to A's and B's. I wrote a note for a person that I asked to prom, and it was basically she could not say no just because of how the note was perfect. What I know is when I go out into the community, I see some of those people of incidents that happened 15, 20 years ago when restorative justice wasn't here and no restorative measures were taken at that time uh, to mend those bridges and, and now all of a sudden we see whether the victim owns a store and the offender robbed it when he was a kid um, and then he goes back in 20 years later as an uh, upstanding citizen, good job, and responsible person. 
That victim sees him as the person who robbed them 20 years ago. And there's no rebuilding or restoring anything there. Now what I know about it, uh, it's, it's just a great thing to have in our community. It was awesome. It was like the sun and the ocean were connecting and it was really cool. I felt an obligation to go back as a 56 year old man now and let them know that if they just get back up on the rails and stop moving the train gonna be okay you know and, and, and life will happen and good things will happen when you see an opportunity take it I think it's a, an excellent program and I, I feel proud to be part of it <laughs>